The following is a presentation of the IHSA Television Network. From the state line to Peoria, the Rockford Christian fans make their first trip downstate, and they'll have some good sportsmanship tonight when they take on Hales Franciscan. We've got basketball to snack on. It's coming up next here on the IHSA Television Network. And America's original March Madness continues from Bradley University in the Carver Arena floor. And as we get set for the semifinals of Class 2A tonight, it's Hales Franciscan and the Spartans from the Chicago Catholic League taking on the Rockford Christian Royal Lions at 31 and 0. And good evening, everyone. Matt Rodewald with you here for the Realtor.com pregame show. So glad you could be with us for what we think are going to be two really good semifinal matchups you don't want to miss. And in case you missed some basketball from earlier today, well, we'll catch you up on that. Here's what's been going on here at Carver Arena today. West Central and Woodlawn tangling in the first semifinal, and West Central taking control and not looking back for the 20-plus point win. And West Central being the semi in the championship game, trying to do what the girls did just two weeks ago, winning the Class 1A crown. And then it was all Newark in the afternoon game, uh, DMAC. And the, and the kids from down the street couldn't quite hang with the number two te uh, ranked team in the state. And now Newark and the Norsemen in the state championship for the very first time at 32 and one. We've got Hales and Rockford Christian coming up next. And then later on tonight, the cardiac kids from Pittsfield, they just seem to find all sorts of ways to continue to win. They're down here, to, or they're up here tonight uh, to take on 34 and Oh, Murfreesboro, who have seemed to brought everybody in town for the five-hour-plus drive to Carver Arena. So we should have some good semifinals tonight, and uh, we'll see if we can crown ourselves a state championship tomorrow. You'll want to be here for that. you want to be here for the semifinals. That's coming up next here. Hales and Rockford Christian, we get you set for that matchup next here on the IHSA Television Network. The IHSA's presentation of the boys' Class 1A and 2A championships are brought to you by Country Financial. What's your idea of financial security? And by the National Association of Realtors. When you're ready to buy or sell a home, contact a Realtor, a member of the National Association of Realtors. Carver Arena, the site for Class 2A in the semifinals. The Spartans of Hales from the south side of Chicago waiting all year to get back here, and they've done it. The 2003 state champs have a load of experience, but Rockford Christian, 31-0, very first time here. It's ex experience against a team that may be making its first undefeated season. We'll find out more as we check in with Mark Lindo and Dave Bernhard with the call tonight, guys. All right, thank you very much, Matt. You know, you, you mentioned that uh, Hales Franciscan waits all year for this for Rockford Christian. They have waited all 15 years of their school's history in order to make it to a state final. And, and Mark, that really is a key thought here tonight. It's the experience of Hales Franciscan against possibly the awe of Rockford Christian. Well, first off from Hales, they have been here before. They say there's, Gary London says there's two seasons, a regular and post. It's showtime for Hales. They finished third place last year. They're trying to punch their ticket to the Saturday night title game here in this semifinal. For Rockford Christian, that exciting win at Northern Illinois University the other night. And Shane Bouch said this team is the one in only their 15th year of existence that is trying to uh, put the program on the map for future teams. Well, for Rockford Christian, they have a guard that can carry them away. He's a four-year starter. Braden Tischer has really done it all for the Royal Lions. Braden Tischer, hey, he had the game winner the other night, a four-year starter, 15.3 points per game. Dave, he can slash it. He can shoot it. He's getting Ivy League interest because he is an intelligent young man both in the classroom and on the floor. And for Hales Franciscan, it's one of the Armstead brothers. It's the senior he's headed to Wisconsin Green Bay. It's Aaron Armstead. First team All-Stater, and there's no doubt he's a super athlete. He can play above the rim, quick in the open floor, averaging 17 points per game. And for folks who have seen dope to these two schools, these two teams, you know there's a different style, and that's what a lot of it may come down to tonight is the pace of this game. Well, Hales, they want to play at a frenetic pace. They're deep Defense creates their offense. They're long, athletic, quick. They get from point A to point B in an extremely quick fashion. Rockford Christian has to have some touches, has to have some ball reversals, and get the ball in the middle of the floor against the pressure defense. The Hales wants to trap the sidelines by utilizing that. Rockford Christian, one of two unbeaten teams here in Class 2A. We'll see Murfreesboro a little bit later. Hales Franciscan at 27-4. They come in the favorite. They come in the hunted, and they are looking to improve to that third place finish from last year. We're just set for 2A basketball, the first semifinal, and 
Let's send it now over to our public address announcer here at Carver Arena. That is Paul Herzog. He'll introduce all the players involved in tonight's game. Good evening, basketball fans. On behalf of the City of Peoria and the Illinois High School Association, welcome to Carver Arena, the home of America's original March Madness, for this 2A semifinal game featuring Chicago Hales Franciscan. The Spartans are 27 and 4, and the Rockford Christian Royal Lions, a record of 31 and 0. At this time, we ask you to please stand, remove your caps, and pause for a moment of silence to remember the men and women of the armed forces serving us here and around the world, away from their families, protecting our freedom. Thank you, we thank you. Now please address the flag with your hand over your heart and join Nick Rivera, a senior at O'Fallon High School, as he sings our national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the Star-spangled banner yet wave O'er the land of the free And the home of the brave Now let's meet the teams in this semifinal game. The non-starters for Hales Franciscan, a 6'4 senior number two, Akeem Cavan. A 6'4 junior number four, Nigel Lomax. A 5'11 junior number 13, Andre Anthony. A 6'2 junior 15, Joshua Russell. 6'4 sophomore. 20, Adam Armstead. 6'3", senior, 22, Kenneth Thigpen. 6'4", senior, 32, Jerry Humphrey. 6'4", sophomore, number 42, Dimitri Thigpen. And now for Rockford Christian, the non-starters, a 5'6", sophomore, 13, Nate Holtman. 5'8", junior, 20, Alex Larson. 5'8", junior, 21, Zach Larson. 5'9", sophomore, 22, Aaron Williams. 6' foot senior, 33, Dan Wade. 6'1", junior, 41, Alex Tisver. 6'2", junior, 43, Andrew Epperson. And a 6'4", junior, 45, A.J. Urich. Now the starting lineups. For Hale Franciscan, at a guard, a 6'4", junior, number one, Eddie Alcantara. For Rockford Christian at a guard, a 6'1", senior, 24, Braden Tischer. Another guard for the Spartans, a 6'2", senior, 10, Cameron Johnson. At a guard, a 6'0", junior, 25, Riley Tischer.
The third guard for Hales Franciscan is 6'4", senior, 23, Aaron Armstead. Third guard for Rockford Christian, 6'4", senior, 32, John Huskins. And a forward for the Spartans, a 6'6", senior, 21, Dominique Walls. Center for the Royal Lions is 6'7", senior, 42, Drew Anderson. And a forward for Hales Franciscan is 6'5", junior, 24, Eric Armstead. And a forward for Rockford Christian is 6'3", senior, 34, Art Ford. Coaching Hales Franciscan in his 12th year with a record of 257 and 93, Gary London. Assistant coaches, Daryl Sanders, A.B. Stoner, Alonza Crowder, and Stephen Jennings. Head coach for 12 years, two at Brockford Christian, where he's 55 and 5, Shane Bouch. Assistant coaches, Chad Schwepke, Mike McClellan, Randy Bubnack. As the players and coaches wish each other good luck, at half court, the IHSA Board of Directors and member schools expect and promote good sportsmanship from all athletes, coaches, students, parents, and spectators. We request your cooperation by supporting the participants and officials in a positive manner. Do what's right. No other state in America can claim the rich history and tradition that's been generated by March Madness. It's America. Hales Franciscan and Rockford Christian. Four Hales, they have four players that average in double figures, led by Aaron Armstead, 17 points per game. Keep an eye out for number one, Eddie Alcantara. He averages 15.5. On the other side, for Rockford Christian, they'll go this way. They'll start four seniors, only Riley Tischer, the lone junior, and their leading scorer, Braden Tischer. They, too, will bring a balanced scoring lineup to this game. For Hales Franciscan, they got here by virtue of a dominating performance in a 67-35 win over Aurora Christian in the Super Sectionals. And for Rockford Christian, a whole different story. They had to go overtime to defeat the Grey Ghost from IVC, 53-51. Hales right now, they have in this tournament run, an average margin of victory is something like 27 points a game. They have been dominating. Rockford Christian, what a great shot that was. Braden Tischer to win that game up at Northern Illinois University on that last second shot. Execution personified by Rockford Christian as they won that game, only leading by one time, and that was the final margin. Coming to you from Carver Arena, the home of the Bradley University Braves here in your 2A basketball semifinals, and it will be the Spartans from Hales Franciscan with it first. This is Aaron Armstead, his junior brother is Eric. Aaron's a good shooter. Alcantara, very quickly he will head to the line 19 seconds in. What we saw there was Rockford Christian coming out in a 2-3 zone. We see ball reverse on the foul on the floor, but very active going after the basketball was Alcantara. This is a very athletic Hales team. Fundamentally, Rockford Christian has to box out. The fundamental is body, then ball. You can't go right to the glass. Officials inspecting a couple of spots on the floor as you get a good look at the head coach of Hales Franciscan, Gary London. Evidently some wetness when everybody went to the floor for Hales Franciscan. They won this title in 2003. That was when it was a single A title. Won it in 2003. They also finished third last year for Hales. They won the 2005 championship on the floor. However, that title was taken away from them because their Illinois State Board of Education recognition had lapsed. So they're looking to come back to Peoria, a chance to improve on that third place finish. Alcantara misses the first, a 63% free throw shooter. One of the top 20 juniors in the state, a great athlete, moved in from New York for the beginning of this season. And you will see instant pressure, you will see constant pressure. And unable to hang on to it down low is Drew Anderson. The pressure was broken, he just couldn't handle it. 
Good vision by Braden Tischer, but Anderson, because of the speed of the game, even though there was an open man, not great focus by Anderson as that ball is the first turnover of the game. Well, in fact, the head coach for Rockford Christian, Shane Bouch, you saw him moments ago, one of his keys to the game was handle the basketball. He needed his team to get a shot every time down the floor. They did not accomplish that goal in the first possession. Alcantara from the elbow. Great job moving the ball side to side by Hales. Once you get the ball in the middle of the zone, you distort the zone and break it down. They got a nice 15-foot look. And from about 17, it's in and out. And the rebound to Eric Armstead. Looking to go high flying here early. It did not develop. They were looking inside to Dominic Walls. So once again, even though Rockford Christian got a good shot at the other end of the floor, the pace of the game was dictated by Hales, and then they came down in about eight seconds, got another shot up, and once again, the loose ball on the floor goes to the red shirts. Dominic Walls at the free throw line for Hales Franciscan. He plays inside. His college position will likely be on the wing, but for the sake of the team, rather than necessarily his own personal future, he stays inside for the Spartans. Only 42 percent in the line, but pretty sweet looking stroke right there. Those two fouls for Rockford Christian key fouls. They both came against Art Ford, their 6'3 senior and big rebounder inside. So he has to have an early seat less than a minute and a half into the game. Turnover coming the other way. Once again, connect, connect with Walls. Alcantara, and they're going to get the foul call on Rockford Christian, their third quick foul. This will go against A.J. Urich. You see Hales coming right into your living room, the lob pass, and getting in front of the defense once again was Alcantara. And Rockford Christian has to have a better effort from a transition standpoint. Coming right at you. Defense inside done nicely by Yurig initially, and then he picks up the foul on his second attempt at D. Alcantara one of four from the line. It's an early five to nothing lead for the Spartans. Pressure broken into the corner. Riley Tischer. And he cannot find the range. Riley, the younger brother of All-Stater Braden Tischer. And they're at the top of this zone for the Lions. Braden Tischer ahead to John Hoskins. Hoskins looking inside. You may have picked up in the background. Head coach Shane Bouch urging patience on offense. First basket of the game for Rockford Christian comes off the right hand of Drew Anderson. Great ball movement. They have five, six, maybe seven touches on that possession. Move the defense side to side. Looked inside. Once again, the ball got, went to the middle. A nice little shot from about 15 wide open. One thing you will see from Hales Franciscan is patience on their end in the half court. Eric Armstead steps in. Interesting matchup defensively and one you would have expected. Braden Tischer with the ball just giving it up. He's matched up with his counterpart number 24 Eric Armstead the junior. Eric takes great pride in his defense and he is matched up against Tischer the leading scorer for the Royal Lions. Here comes Hales. Cameron Johnson. Three misses inside for Walls under pressure. Tischer's going to get a look. Maybe another. Got it. Extra shots, extra letters like a game of horse. And you don't give a great player like that a second opportunity. Both those three-point attempts came off the bounce, but he was able to gather himself, get his feet underneath him, elevate, and nail the second one. The early 5 to nothing lead for Hales has now been evened up at 5-5, thanks to Brader Tischer's three. 
Cameron Johnson at the point. We've got the Armstead brothers on the wings. This is Aaron. Alcantara, that's a walk. So the early run by Hales Franciscan of five straight. Countered on the other side. Braden Tischer says, I'll get the loose ball. Why don't I just step up? I'll knock down the three, and we're tied. Welcome you back to Carver Arena with Matt Rodewald on the sidelines and Mark Lindo alongside. I'm Dave Bernhard and the early storm weathered by Rockford Christian. And interestingly enough, they look like they were in deep trouble. Mark Art Ford leaving with two quick fouls and he is so integral inside where they really need him. Well, Ford had two huge stickbacks in the late seconds of the super sexual win to tie the game twice. He's their most athletic presence on the inside. Their strongest player, they're going to miss him. The key right now, Rockford Christian has three turnovers already in four minutes. They have to take better care of the ball. If they do, they'll hang around all night long. Braden Tischer now with Aaron Armstead, the senior Armstead brother on him, but Tischer's gonna go to the rack. Sent back the other boy by Walls, here come the Spartans. And you can count it. Eric Armstead with the bucket, and you see how lightning quick the Spartans are off this block. Uh, points off turnovers, you see it come up on the screen. Eric Armstead, the pick, first the miss by uh, Tischer, and then on the other end, there's the crossover dribble, left, right, quick crossover on the floor, and then the kiss off the glass for two and a chance for the conventional three-point play. Eric Armstead, 14.1 points per game. He's going to get another chance inside. Yurig with the board for the Royals. The official IHSA nickname is Royal Lions. But anybody in Rockford, this goes by Royals. The players call themselves the Royals, the fans, and we will too. Inside out it goes. That's Riley Tischer for three. Riley Tischer, that's his third attempt on that spot on the floor. An excellent spot up shooter, good release, got his feet underneath him. Ball went inside out. That's the best way to get perimeter jump shooting is distort the defense first, then throw it back outside. Inside position by Hoskins. One point lead belonging to Rockford Christian. Fisher creates some space. Put back. Drew Anderson with his second bucket of the game, and it's a three-point lead and a 10-2 run for the Royals. Drew Anderson just hanging around, but once again, it was Tischer who broke down the defense and got the ball deep into the lane. Hales rotated up, and the blockout responsibility was then missed by Hales. Hales Franciscan used to seeing zones. Cameron Johnson looks for the three ball. That's a strong rebound right there by Braden Tischer. Tischer, a great example of what a good team does. Right now, Hales 0 for 5 from the arc. Now, Dave, we've talked about this before. A 20-foot shot will come out about 14 feet. A missed field goal normally comes out about 70% of the distance for a shot. Long rebounds are very significant for the Royals tonight. Anderson at the top to Yurig. Here comes Hales the other way. Alcantara. Eddie Alcantara with five points. Good transition, Alcantara under control once again, even though that wasn't an easy basket, the defense wasn't set. That shot came quickly from Anderson. The block will go to Aaron Armstead. Johnson and Walls elevates. He playing above the tin on that one was Walls, and that was an acrobatic takeoff from the trampoline, if you will. Assume the miss and got it. This is what they do. So we see the pump fake and the block, he gets it clean, and then they come right back down the floor in the open floor. Johnson's a pretty good one, and then the follow and the flush with 
an exclamation point. Anderson. The lead will go back to the Royals. Anderson, nice move. He might have got hit right in the quad, holding things a little bit. That would be significant. Drew Anderson, 6'7", 220 pounder. Hales obviously holding for one with 20 seconds of clock running. Will Rockford Christian switch their defense the last 10 seconds? A lot of coaches like to do that. I think Shane Bouch will choose not to and stay in their zone. You got a weak rebound on the weak side. Assume a miss here. Who wants it? Aaron Arm said, not afraid to take big shots. And a whistle with four tenths of a second left. And Rockford Christian head coach Shane Bouch cannot believe it. Shane Bouch had a chance to watch his super central game the other night. Very animated on the sideline. Had a little, little visit with the official right now as he looks at the clock. And wanting to know in his questioning why that was a foul of four tenths of a second to go. But a great job by Hales running that clock down at Armstead taking the ball to the hoop at the last second. This will be the eighth and ninth free throws here in the first quarter for Hales. Conversely, Rockford Christian has not gotten to the charity stripe as of yet. And I believe that may be a, been the topic of conversation moments ago. Absolutely imperative that everyone in the white shirts right now does their job, and that's put a body on their opponent for this rebound and can't give up a tip in with four tenths of a second to go. Two free throws for Armstead, one last heave. And that will bring our first quarter to a close. We've been back and forth here in the first eight minutes. The unbeaten Royals at 31-0 hanging right there. Hales Franciscan, 13-12 on top after one. Getting set to start the second quarter here at Carver Arena with uh, Rockford Christian right in it with Hales Franciscan. You know, Rockford Christian making its first appearance in school history down here at the state championship. And Rockford itself, the town's a buzz about all sorts of basketball going on. You know, East is playing in its, uh, for its, sectional le or its first sectional title since 1984 when they went 23-6. and six. And Auburn coming off its first sectional win in the sectional round since 1979. So you have three Rockford teams still at it. Rockford pride for sure. You can keep track of those other scores on IHSA.org, guys. Very good, Matt. As we begin the second quarter, you will notice for the Rockford Christian Royals, they are missing number 42, Drew Anderson. He just walked right past us, back towards the locker room. Mark, any indication as to what that may be about? You know, I, I had mentioned on a previous trip down the floor that he looked like on that bucket that he had driving the basket. He got hit in the quad, so I'm sure it's contusion. They're going to try to ice it, just evaluate it. Maybe a little bit of, of a muscular massage. Alex Larson has come in to replace Anderson now. That's about a foot difference, so the lineup juggled a little bit. Alex Larson at 5'8", replacing the 6'7", Drew Anderson. Interesting to see back in the basketball game with two fouls. There's no other than Art Ford, so he'll have to be careful, but he should do a good job being hidden in the interior of this zone defense. He's right in the middle of that scrap. And possibly an unforced turnover. Well, Drew Anderson with six first quarter points. And this is where he came down a little awkwardly. Yeah, yep. that's, that was his drive to the right, and I think he caught a knee into the quad area and grimaced immediately. Anderson, 7.4 rebounds per game. Three sport athlete. But this is a team that Shane Bouch has built in two years with balance, and that's one of the reasons why. Art Ford, his first basket of the night, he averages 11.3 a game. And the Royals with the one-point lead. Alex Johnson handing out the dime. What a great cut by Ford. And Johnson hit him on time on target. Spectacular slam by Eric Armstead. Highlight film right there. Put that one on the video because that was a slam dunk personified. Alcantara, it's a two-on-one. Look out. Loose ball to Hales. 
Into the game for the Spartans, number 22 is Kenneth Thigpen. He's a 6'3 senior. Matt Rodewald working the sidelines. He can give us an update on the condition of Drew Anderson. See Anderson sitting on the bench. Just leads with the right leg. Riley Titcher at the top. Ford taking it to the rack. Rebound comes off to Jerry Humphrey, also checking in here at the second quarter break. He's a 6'4", 225-pound senior. Still a pretty good possession by Rockford Christian. A couple good ball reversals. Just like that, Kenneth Thigpen drains the three from the right wing. Only his 12th three of the year, but got that one with a great one-two step. Stepped into a shot, elevated that, and had a good release. Pressure on Ford. Locked on by Humphrey and enough for the foul. Let's check in with Matt with that Anderson update. Yeah, what happened was uh, just a simple knee on knee uh, as far as uh, the bruising goes. He just kind of wanted to walk around on a beat underneath the uh, locker room. Looks like he's going to be okay. Came back out, sitting on the bench, should be ready to go. Looks up at that board and sees his team down by four. Four lead changes between these two teams in the first quarter. The emotion. Hales came out of the gate with that 5 nothing run, and Rockford Christian took their first punch and their second punch, hanging around trying to shorten the game right now. And another quick foul. This one goes against Aaron Armstead. Well, we talked about pace in the open. Well, the first quarter score, the pace would favor fill in the blank. I would think, yeah, it's, it, it's a dead heat because I think the game is going up and down like Hales prefers, where the score isn't quite as, as high a paced score as they would like. Spartans from Hales, Franciscan averaging 72 points per game. Rockford Christian at 61 and a half. A flat out guarantee conditioning will be a factor as we get this game into the early fourth quarter and then obviously down the stretch. Uring strong to the hole. Great job. He showed the ball to the left, crossed over to the right, was able to square his shoulder up and get a nice soft kiss off the glass. A.J. Uring, the 6'4 junior. <laughs> up and around and behind the backboard for Kenneth Thigpen. Well, Rockford Christian down by four. They needed a big shot. They needed it from a big man. They got it. A.J. Urich cuts the lead to two as we go to break. Well, the Catholic League is a diverse league, and so we have a lot of teams that run different styles. I mean, when we're playing De La Salle, Mount Carmel, Leo, those schools, St. Rita, they want to get up and down the floor like we do. So we get that style, but then we play other teams like a Brother Rice, a Loyola, St. Lawrence. Uh, they want to slow it down, and so we get a, we get a good mix uh, so that when we come down here, we've kind of seen a variety of different styles, so it's not any culture shock to us to, to adjust. That's Gary London talking about the Chicago Catholic League schedule. Two of their four losses came to an outstanding De La Salle team. But how about some of these wins? A win over Whitney Young in overtime in a game in which the Spartans forced 38 turnovers. They defeated the Mustangs from Downers Grove South, knocked off St. Rita twice, St. Joseph's twice, and Proviso East. So you play in the Chicago Catholic League, a schedule that consists of 4A schools in your league, and then who do you schedule outside the league? 4A powers. Yeah, and then, uh, you know, Coach London told us the other night that Whitney Young, he thought was that, that was their signature win. That's the one that really helped his team to believe that they can play with anyone in the state, one through 4A. Braden Tischer stops and pops. Braden Tischer came out of that break with this is my opportunity to get my team going. He is the leader. He is the go-to guy. He is the man that they have to have step up to get a W tonight. Too much traffic inside. Hales gets a break. And Aaron Armstead goes glass and hard glass for the two-point lead. The young viewers that watched that shot would see how Armstead was able to, even though he was going to his left, he was able to lift off both feet equally, square his shoulders, and then get the glass and the friendly bounce off that glass. Drew Anderson can hit it from there. Rockford Lutheran, a Rockford Christian. There's Rockford Lutheran, of course, 
in Rockford. They were an outstanding football power this year, but it's Rockford Christian that will have the offensive foul called on Braden Tischer. Great job. I think it's going to be T uh, Thigpen that rotates in. There's a, the first shot by Fisher. Then there's the kiss off the glass. So a couple nice drives to the bucket. Hales getting the ball deep. That was the first field goal for Aaron Armstead. He averages 17 points per game. He had been 0 for his first four tonight. He looks at it straight on. Offensive rebound starting to add up here for the Spartans. Well, there's that fundamental mistake. Larson, who's had some really good minutes in the reserve, went right to the glass, and he's only a little shake and bake. That ball went right over his head. He didn't make contact with the body. And you notice when Anderson came back in for Rockford Christian, Art Ford came out to protect his two fouls. He, they needed Ford for the early minutes until Anderson was all settled back and ready to come back in, and now he's out. Alcantara cannot get it to go. Rockford Christian, 13-12 edge on the boards. An absolute huge key as they're competing up above the rim with Hales, much quicker, faster, higher jumpers. Riley Tisher to his older brother, Braden. Oh, man, he drains that with a hand in his face. And what a great set that was. Braden Tisher came off a double screen, a tight curl cut. What a great set. You can see Shane Bouch's team had practiced probably hundreds of times this year. That was picture perfect X and O basketball offensively. Final two minutes of the first half, tied at 20. And now a chance for the Royals to take the lead. You know, Braden Tischer, he's the one that controls the tempo. He puts up three fingers. They'd like him to play away from the ball because he can shoot, but they like him to play with the ball because he can create. Larson picks that ball up just in the nick of time. Tischer versus Thickpin, the matchup right here. Whistle blows, and the foul will be called on Hale Franciscan. You know, great change of pace by Braden Tischer right here. As he has the floor spread, he kind of waited for an opening. It was like slow, slow, quick, quick, like a ballroom dancer. Then he went into overdrive, acceleration, got to the 10 and gets himself to the free throw line. I'd love to have your 6'1 senior guard be one of your best free throw shooters. How about an 85% clip from the line? There's not much this young man doesn't do for his basketball team. Just giving them the lead. How about this game? Six lead changes, four ties, as Rockford Christian has answered the would-be critics already. A free throw attempt by Braden Tischer, the first free throw attempts for the Royal Lions here tonight. Shane Bouch told us that Brandon Tischer was driven by the small school stigma in Rockford. This, you know, the Royals being a small double-A school, people thought, what can they do on the basketball floor, only 15 years old? Well, they can be in the state semifinals of Class 2A. That's what they can do. In fact, one of their wins this year came at the end of December, 48-44 over Newark. That's the only loss that Newark has had this year. And, of course, the Norsemen playing in the 1A championship, the championship that you will see right here on IHSA TV tomorrow at about 2 o'clock. Inside it goes to Akeem Cabin just into the game. Well, at that point, you know, I think Hales has settled too much for three-point field goals. They're only one for nine. When they distort the defense, get the ball into the painted area, you become that much more dangerous. Walls tried to hang on, and you see Drew Anderson limping once again. This is not the type of foul that Gary London would like to see out near half court. Well, what you have there is Dominique Walls got off balance. Anything in athletics, you have to be balanced. Walls got his uh, center of gravity way out in front of him and was not able to relocate his legs, thus drew the foul. You don't expect Rockford Christian to hang on here for 30 seconds. And whistle blows again. This time it will go against Alcantara. David. That will be the 16 foul on Hales Franciscan. As you continue to call the play-by-play -play of this, you'll see numerous back screens on the weak side from Rockford Christian. On that particular play, wide open on the back screen cut was uh, Urig off the bench, and Shane Bouch was very disappointed. His team missed him, but Rockford Christian running a lot of stuff away from the basketball. 
So the leading scorer for Hales is Eddie Alcantara. He had all five of those points in the first quarter, and he just picked up his second foul. Tied at 22 with 22 seconds to play in the half. This is the first Class 2A semifinal coming up after this game. We will have another unbeaten team, 34-0 Murfreesboro, taking on Pittsfield. Watch the skip pass and a screen on the weak side of the zone for three. There it is. And on the sideline will deny Rockford Christian the ball. Riley Titcher kind of lost track where he was. Five seconds, plenty of time here for Hales. Court awareness. We had that play scouted pretty well, but so did Hales. Court awareness, so you need to know where you're at on the basketball floor. Ran out of real estate there. Now look to milk every last second out of this clock. Here they come. From distance. And we will go to the locker rooms. Tied at 22, a one-point lead for Hales at the end of the first quarter. And now 22-22 in 2A. We'll take a break. We've got a lot going on at the half. There's been a lot happening in the first two quarters. 22-22 in 2A basketball. And welcome back. Halftime here. We are tied. Coach, uh, you guys said that you passed the eye test coming into this one. You th I think so in the first half. What do you think? Well, we've got some bigger kids, and we've got some kids who can make plays. Our big thing now is just being composed enough in this setting and, and handling the basketball. There's a lot of reaching and slapping from behind and, and a lot of pressure on the basketball from time to time. And if we can just look up the floor when they're on the double teams, there are guys open. And then out of our zone, we just got to compete on the glass. You know, when we've gotten hurt, it's been on second chance points. Um, we're going to have to live with a couple three-pointers from the perimeter uh, with the athletic matchup that they have in their favor. So I think just be on the offensive end, showing a little composure, we can get shots. If we play north-south, the officials will help us with the reaching. If we play east-west and get sloppy with the ball, they're not going to bail us out on that. So that's going to be my message. All right, Coach, good luck in the second half. Thank you very much. And 22-22, we are all even. Rockford Christian trying to stay unbeaten against the heavily favored Hale Franciscan team from Chicago. We're going to find out how it goes here in the second half right here on the IHSA Television Network. Time now for the IHSA Did You Know? Cobden High School's Dakota Knopp was the starting pitcher in the past three Class 1A softball state title games, helping the Apple Knockers win back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back championships. Did You Know? brought to you by Realtor.com. Search more than 4 million homes for sale on Realtor.com, the number one homes for sale website in the U.S. And back here at Carver Arena, our score, Rockford Christian 22, Hales Franciscan 22. Matt Rodewald with you here on the floor here at Carver Arena. I'm sure this is exactly what you had in mind. It is if you're Rockford Christian. We'll take a look at some of the highlights here. It's been a real entertaining first half here of our Class 2A semifinal. And, of course, Rockford Christian been able to get some rebounds and hit some shots and keep the, uh, the tempo at their pace. And they've also hit a couple of shots from the outside. Braden Tischer has been excellent hitting a couple of shots early on. They've been able to break the pressure from Hales Franciscan and take it right to the rim, very composed, as uh, Shane Botch has mentioned, talking about composure in the offensive end. Then Hales got back into it, as we saw a couple of leads go back and forth here with the Armstead brothers and Eddie Alcantara getting in the mix, and a nice high-flying dunk, a lob as well. And you can see Tischer getting from the wing there, about 15 feet, so he's been able to find some space. Take a look at some of the statistics here with Hales Franciscan shooting about 35%. They were pretty even for a while with Rockford Christian and the Royals, but not so much in the last couple of minutes. Not very many in the free throws, but you can see Hales Franciscan struggling from the perimeter to get anything going, and that is why we are tied at 22 all. We've got to get you ready for the second half. We'll do that next right here on the IHSA Television Network. Hey, welcome back with the Hales Franciscan head coach, Gary London. Gary, you're not playing the way you want to right now. How do you change that? Well, we're gonna have, we talked about uh, picking up the tempo a little bit. Uh, obviously, for most of the year, that's what we do. And so we're looking at pick up, picking up the tempo. We've been walking the ball up a little bit too, too much. So, uh, you know, we're not getting the stops on defense, and that, uh, that's one reason why we aren't picking up the tempo. So we're adjusting our defense a little bit and see if we can get the tempo going up a little bit. All right, Coach, good luck in the second half. 
All right, Dave, we'll send it back over to you. All right, thank you very much, Matt. So you see the numbers on the scoreboard, 22-22. What you don't see are the rebounding numbers. Gary London can't be too happy about that either. 15-13, Rockford Christian with the edge. They've done a great job fundamentally blocking out. They've gotten those long rebounds we've talked about. Nine misses by Hales from three-point land. And for the most part, Rockford Christian has done a great job fundamentally on the glass. And one of ten from three-point range. Here's a team that shoots nearly 50% from that arc. Now, for Rockford Christian, this is a team loaded with seniors and seniors that don't get excited. A very even keel team that certainly played out that way in the first half. Well, you know, they took the first couple punches from Hales when the pace was more frenetic, and Shane Bouch told us he thought he had a mature team. That bore out Hales, on the other hand. Gary London said that he had told his team, respect everyone. Now, Rockford Christian, they deserve a lot of respect. They got a doggone good record, undefeated on their own line. But uh, I think you'll have to see Hales trying to get the ball into the interior of what's been a pretty solid zone own defense and will they go right at Art Ford and try to either you know make him get his third foul or if he allows them to score on the inside not getting that third foul. Eddie Alcantara with two personal fouls for Hales Franciscan as well. The Spartans 27 and 4 this season. They finished third in class 2A last year. Rockford Christian the Royals 31 and 0. Eric Armstead and now a chance for Rockford Christian. John Hoskins will have it. Give it up to Tischer. Anderson, Riley Tischer now. Both Tischers, the both Tischers played 16 minutes of the first half, every tick. And we look for that additional pressure, just as you heard Gary London say they wanted. Here it comes, Alcantara. Eddie Alcantara, coast to coast. And that's how quickly it happens from the 6'4", 200 pound junior. He is very explosive in the open floor. Very, very quick acceleration. A little bit outside of where Tischer wanted to let that one go. They get it to Ford. He hangs and rolls it in. Art Ford, an outstanding football player, just took up playing organized basketball last year. Cameron Johnson, count the bucket, a free throw coming up. Get a chance to see as we come back on the replay, Ford's interior bucket for Rock for Christian. You see his balance and his ability to shade off the would-be defender with his body. That's that athleticism. That's that football build you just mentioned. Great athleticism and a hang time for Ford. And then at the other end, Johnson answers. Free throw shooting, not a bright spot tonight for Hales. They're now just 5 of 10 from the line. For a moment there, the Rockford Christian bench thought that that last personal foul was on Art Ford. In fact, they had gotten Urich off the bench halfway to the scores table until they realized that it was not on him. So Ford stays out there. Now Hales has come out of the second half, and they've switched to his zone. Don't forget, you want to stick around, another undefeated team coming your way, the top-ranked team in the state. Murfreesboro, the Red Devils taking on Pittsfield. Hales Franciscan held the number one spot all season long until the last regular season poll before Murfreesboro overtook them for that top spot. Now, what Rockford Christian wants to do, they're getting into a set right now. They want to get the ball into the middle, then get one of the two Tishers a jump shot. Same steal by Alcantara. Eric Armstead, the four-point lead now for the Spartans. We talked about Alcantara. He is very creative in the open floor. He did a good job of waiting for Armstead to fill the other lane and then deliver the dime. Braden Tischer tonight has nine points, but he has also turned it over six times. Here's one of them. There's the steal overplaying the passing lane. And then he waited for his teammate, Armstead, to fill the lane and delivers the basketball on time on target. Big three right there from Braden Tischer. 
Check in now with Matt Rodewald. Matt? Guys, Shane's been, uh, Shane Bots has been talking with the officials about trying to get a foul change the last couple of minutes. They called it on Braden uh, Tischer, and he wanted it on Art Ford. Now, that would put Art Ford at three fouls, but still, I don't think you want it on your star player, and so he's trying to get that clarified, and the officials are just not budging on it. That's very interesting. That's the second foul, by the way, on Braden Tischer, so he and Ford both have two, so he was, he was willing to trade that third foul for Ford to bring Tischer back to one, but like Matt said, it will stay as is. Well, I believe that one did go to Ford on the inside, so I think he's coming out after this free throw. Now five of 11 from the line, so Ford does pick up his third personal foul, and Urich back in. That was a play that I'm sure Ford would like to have back because he had rotated third man into the lane just like he'd be coached to do and he was in a position to take a charge. Instead, he opened up the door, as we call it, and caught the man with his hips. That's the long arms to get the free throw line. Eric Armstead, now one of three from the line. He has seven points. His team has a two-point lead. Braden Tischer with it now. And that is a walk. It will be the 10th turnover of the game for Rockford Christian. About three minutes in here to the second half. Shane Bouch working his players right now. His team trails by a bucket. Well, it's definitely been better to get further than we did last year. I mean, making it to the final four year senior year is about all you can ask for. Um, and we've been hoping for this day ever since we were in junior high. So it's been a dream come true, I guess. That junior high team from Rockford Christian was 42 and one. Now, he says they've been waiting for it since junior high. They've actually been waiting for it, at least Braden Tischer, Drew Anderson, and John Hoskins. They've been waiting for this moment. They may not have realized it at the time since they were three years old. Those three all went to Rockford Christian's preschool together. 42 and one in their junior high. That's pretty good winning percentage. Huh? That'll get the job done. 31 and 0 this year. There's Dominic Walls. That gets the job done as well. Well spoken with Drew Anderson. Nearly the steal there by Eric Armstead. Anderson with six points, two rebounds. They'll try to walk on as a tight end of the University of Illinois. Great physique on that young man. He got a nice baby jump hook, jump hook with his right hand. He has not utilized that one yet tonight. And now with 4.26 to play here in the third quarter, Ford back into the game with his three personal fouls. Rockford Christian had numbers initially. They decided let's go to our half court set. I think this is a very big possession right now by Rockford Christian. They were going to want Braden Tischer to get this shot. See if they screen the back part of the zone for him to skip pass. Now these are seconds coming off the clock with Ford on the floor with those three fouls as well. What they're doing is they're shortening the game. It's now an 11 and a half minute basketball game. To Anderson. And there's that possession. It buckets two for Anderson. 31 29 Hales. Great execution. Hoskins gets the ball to Anderson. Day we call that the short corner, a tough place for the zone to defend. You get to the short corner, you get good baseline jump shots. Johnson travels in the lane. Well, dominating numbers for Hales Franciscan. Outscoring Rockford Christian 18 8 on points in the paint. On the other side, 10 zip advantage fast break points for Hales and that would be expected given their defensive pressure. Absolutely. They love the run for fun. No doubt. And there's the eight point advantage in the red here at Carver Arena. Alcantara a little out of control and a travel and that's back to back turnovers for Hale. Tra Hale's traveling in the lane. Alcantara loves to push it in the open floor. He got bumped on the outside, no call. Good call on the walk, and you made a great play-by-play -play call there. He was out of control from the get-go. Gary London not too happy right now. Get his team up by two. 
Hales Franciscan the heavy favorites coming into this class 2A finals despite having two teams in the finals with perfect records. Riley Tischer only four field goal attempts on the night. They have to get him involved in the offense and he's going to have to knock down a jump shot or two from beyond the arc if Rockford Chris is to pull this off. I like the strategy right now by Shane Mouch. He's shortening the game. All he wanted to do was be around by the end of three quarters and it looks like he might be doing just that. Okay now does Gary London make an adjustment here defensively does he want to see this clock hit two minutes and possibly run right past that down to zero. It depends how stubborn he is. I know he's itching right there. If we get a shot at him. He, he looks like he wants to have his team play but is he stubborn not going to let him. You see John Hoskins playing catch with himself. There's Gary London. Or now they're going to trap out of the zone. So the ball should go to the middle right now for Rockford Christian. There it is. Ford a lot of traffic in there. But our Ford will go to the line for two. Anytime there's a trap, you, if the defense does not rotate up to the trapper's man, the ball goes to the middle. Now you have a numbers game, whether it be four on three, three on two. So basically, Rockford Christian got what just what they wanted out of that possession. Hart Ford, 64% from the line. Two free throws would tie it. Shane Botch in his second year at Rockford Christian. 55 and 5. 31 and 0 this year. Not a bad start. 127 free throw attempts for Ford. That just shows how active he is in toward the 10. Let's see if Hales capitalizes on those two misses this way. Eric to Aaron. They play catch. The skip to Aaron. Inside Alcantara. Eddie Alcantara, a six foot four, 200 pound junior, transferred from New York City. Very active, getting acclimated to his team in terms of what Gary London wants from them, as well as what, uh, admittedly, Eddie says, just getting used to playing Chicago basketball. Good inside position by Alcantara as he got an inside of two white shirts and a quick jumper he is was able to come down and carry him that rebound. For three. Oh, and a foul. Oh, my. Are you kidding me? Great coaching right there. <laughs> Eric, get it. Eric Armstrong finishing off what his brother Aaron started. Ah, what a big time athletic play that was from the weak side. Timed that jump perfectly and picked his team up another notch from a momentum standpoint. 60 seconds to play here in the third. The Spartans all looking over to their bench to what their defensive assignment should be as you see the distance that Cameron Johnson is giving. Riley Tischer. Well, Dave, not only are they shortening the game, but they're getting some rest as well. They're actually getting some rest on the floor. That was a great shot right there of Riley Tischer just balling his hip, just basically carrying on a conversation, granted a loud one here, with his coach, Shane Bouch. Now Hoskins with it. Clock winding down. We've hit 10. This is Riley Tischer. Tough shot. The one hand attempt put back. An opportunity here for the Spartans. Aaron Armstead. We come to the end of three. It's a four point lead for Hales Franciscan. How'd they get their last points? Well, I guess you'd say it's the easiest shot in basketball right here.
Hey, welcome back to Carver Arena as we get set to start the fourth quarter, 33-29, to 29, the Spartans in front. And a lot of the success for the Spartans this year has become, been because of junior Eddie Alcantara. And why? Because, well, he's a transfer from New York. How does he end up in Chicago? Well, the reserve at Rice High School in New York City, his father had died at a very early age. He was being raised as one of five children by a single mother, and his uncle agreed to take him in, but on one condition, as long as his grades are up. If not, his uncle says everything stops. How's he doing in the classroom? How about a 3.5 GPA? That's not bad and pretty attractive to Division I scouts, I'd say. That and a, an excellent basketball game besides, as Alcantara was not on this team last year, as Matt said, because of the transfer. Last year, right now, at this time, it was a semifinal loss to Robinson. On that Robinson team was Myers Leonard. Of course, he went on to Illinois. That was a three-point loss to Robinson, who went on to win a state title 64-61. Now, in that game, Hales led at the end of the third quarter by how many points? Four. How many do they lead by now as we go to the fourth? Four. Anderson. Anderson went up strong. His eyes were looking to where the pressure was going to come. That's one he would like to have back. He's getting the ball deep and just rushing his shot a little bit. I think you got to keep going to him inside. They're doing a great job as Rockford Christian looking to the weak side. Now Rockford Christian has had a couple of close uh, games in these playoffs. A two-point win in the super sectional and then a three-point win in this first game of the sectional. Riley Tischer for the lead. Check that, cut it to one. On cue, we said Riley Tischer had to become involved. Sweet shot, sweet stroke, great extension and follow through with the wrist. Aaron Armstead with the left hand, oh my. What was amazing about that shot, Davis Ford had rotated in third man, helping out defensively from the weak side, but he was just able to go ahead and miss the charge and finish with the left hand. Riley Tischer. He'll look to his brother Braden, a year older. Tough pass into Ford. Rebound Alcantara. And that just got away from Eddie Alcantara. You know, one of the great coaches of all time in a different sport, Tony Dungy, made a comment about we never change our game plan because changing game plan shows panic and we don't panic. Shane Bouch has done the same thing. He stayed with the game plan, and his team is just hanging around right now. Definitely the pace of the game and the fact that they've shortened the game to six minutes, hanging around by three. Right now, Rockford Christian is where they would want to be coming into the fourth quarter. Aaron Armstead with just six points tonight. He averages 17 at last bucket by Aaron Armstead. It's the first field goal for him since the 350 mark of the second quarter. Now Larson back into the game for Rockford Christian. Braden Tischer. Hale Franciscan looking to build on a three-point lead. And they will get a foul inside. Who are they pointing at? Could be Riley Tischer. And indeed, he picks up that personal foul. Rockford Christian has done a much better job since the early going in this game, getting back on transition. Definitely something they focused on. Five minutes, 40 seconds to play. Aaron Armstead ring it up for three. Aaron Armstead with the 69th three of the season. It's a six-point lead, and Rockford Christian has to be thinking about that undefeated season. Riley Tischer the other way. Armstead, he came on a nice out of bounds play, screened by Johnson, then Riley Tischer back to back trays to keep his team hanging around and regain momentum. Aaron tied up by Anderson. That's a hell ball. Hales will still have it. Dominique Johnson doing a good job with the ball screen. Good weak side rotation, clean hands right there on the top by Drew Anderson. Aaron, the senior, the putback. 
That's Jerry Humphrey with the bucket and a five-point lead. Yet another offensive rebound for the Spartans from Hales Franciscan. Again, this time it's Alcantara with the block. Anderson goes right at it to shoot two. That's a big drive by Anderson because for the first time all evening with 4.36 to go, Rockford Christian looks a little bit gas and winded. But Anderson took the ball on the baseline. Watch him square his shoulders up as he comes into the picture to draw the foul. If he would have laid the ball up uh, straight in, it would have been a clean block. Good players understand how to use their body to shield from the defense. Anderson only 58% from the line this year gets the kind roll. Friendly fire there. Anderson with nine points. Normally, when you get the lucky roll on the first one, even if you're not a great shooter, the second one is much more clean. Rebound off to Humphrey. Inside the arc for Eric Armstead. Ford. Here come the Royals. Larson couldn't get it there. Alcantara ahead to Walls. And the foul. Showtime. You could see that one developing. No doubt about it. Walls got in front of the defense. He was able to get his leg in front of him. There's the intercept for Alcantara. The long throw out. And in stride, the flush, the finish, and the foul. And right at you, Dominique Walls. Six point difference. We've hit the four minute mark coming up. And now Shane Bouch will take a timeout. He was going to get a media timeout if he could get a dead ball, but it never happened. He looks up at the board. Hales Franciscan, the six-point lead. Tight game here at Carver Arena with Hales in front with a little bit of cushion for the first time tonight. Talk, look and listen in both huddles. Uh, the kids from the Spartans talking to themselves, talking about finishing this one. Gary London immediately looking at Eddie Alcantara about that long pass and congratulating him as opposed to the flashy dunk on one end. And then in the other end for Rockford Christian, Shane Bouch talking about going against that 1-3-1. Ball fakes and patience. you got to have composure on the offensive end, and this is their biggest deficit they've faced all night long. All right, thank you very much, Matt. And we were talking about it just going out to break. Shane Bouch knew that he was going to get immediate timeout if he could get a dead ball situation. He would have loved to have had it on that second free throw by Anderson. It didn't occur. The dunk went the other way, and the momentum had shifted. Tisher with a good look, but wasn't able to finish. Brother Riley has had the hot hand, nailing two. Three-point range, Hales Franciscan just two of 13. Rockford Christian, five of nine, including those two threes by Riley Tisher. Well, Riley Fisher is the only new starter for Rockford Christian. All four of the other had returned, and Riley Fisher, they called her, Tisher, they called the X Factor. He's had an outstanding season. Right now, Eric, or check that, Aaron Armstead looking to put the team on his senior shoulders. Aaron Armstead only three for 12, but he takes the ball behind his back, gets into the defense, draws the foul. Pick your poison, who it could have been on, but getting the ball deep. Rockford Christian not doing a really good job on their third man rotation from the weak side, getting squared up. They have yet to take a charge against a downhill team like Hales Franciscan when they attack the basket. Gary London and all his players, they don't shy away from it. They say, yes, this season, this whole season, was motivated by last year's loss in these very same semifinals. They wanted to take that extra step and more and bring home their second state championship. And they've got that eight point advantage. Those their biggest margin increases. Ahead it goes, Aaron. And it's a 10 point game. 
Hales is just so well coached and well schooled. When they get the turnover, they're just not happy to have the basketball. They want to finish at the other end. They get the ball out in front of the defense in an extremely quick fashion. And another timeout called by Shane Bouch. The 31-0 season, the perfect season in jeopardy here with 2.53 to play as Hales explodes the length of the floor. Alcantara once again with the outlet. The beneficiary right there finishes it up, Aaron Armstead. This is game number one of a doubleheader here tonight in 2A basketball. Our first semifinal finds Hales on top. A good one coming up here in game number two following the country financial three-point showdown. Pittsfield and Murfreesboro. Murfreesboro undefeated 34-0. They are the regular season number one team to wrap up that regular season poll. Hales Franciscan held that top spot most of the season. Pittsfield an unbelievable run through the state tournament. They have won three of their last four games in the tournament on the last possession of the game. Cardiac kids, and you know, you got a little bit of tortoise in the hair in that game. Murfreesboro, they want to get up and down, giddy up and, and create some frenetic pace in their own mind. Pittsfield, they want to have numerous touches. They want to get the best shot possible, and they'll be patient to do that. So it's another tortoise and hare who controls the pace type of game. Let's go to Matt Rodewald. Guys, obviously down 10. Shane Botch wants to get some instant offense. Look for Riley Tischer and uh, Braden Tischer, both Tischers, that come across screens across the lane. Alex Larson, the key point man here. They need to do something to stop this 13-4 Hales Franciscan run. Look out, Alcantara. Eric Armstead, Alcantara. Alcantara has been the man tonight. His line isn't awesome, but he has done a million things in the open floor. Walls just covers up that rebound. He had Eric Armstead ahead, but with 2.20 to play in this one and a 12-point lead, the Spartans will look to take a little bit of air out of the ball. Dave Alcantara, 9.7 rebounds, four assists, and he must have at least four steals. Aaron Armstead, oh, everything coming up red for the Spartans. What do you say, starting to feel it? Aaron Armstead showing the player he is. Nice little elevation as he got the ball deep. Another one for Riley Tischer. He has four three-pointers here tonight. All 12 of his points coming from outside the arc. And the third timeout called here by Rockford Christian. Look into that Hales Franciscan huddle. One of the things that Gary London thought could be a real factor in this postseason, especially when they get to Peoria, his team has had experience playing on this floor, playing in big games through the entire schedule. For Rockford Christian, it was a case of would they be overwhelmed by it? Well, only by Hales here in the last few moments. Shane Bouch exhorting his team. He's going to coach it to the final buzzer, play to the final buzzer, trying to draw some X's and O's up to get his team some defensive, not just stops, but now they have to gamble a bit and try to get some turnovers and create those in the fast pace. That's a long time to go and a short time to get there. For a team that's 31 0 and that may have just a minute 56 seconds to go to protect that perfect record. That's about as calm of a bench as, as you would imagine in any sort of sport at any level. Well, you know, great coaches are great teachers of the game. And Coach Bouch exhorts, exudes, pleads with his team to keep playing hard. He's got as much sweat on him as any of the players do, but yet he has that calm demeanor on the sideline. We saw that in their last second victory the other night against Illinois Valley and the Supers. Now Rockford Christian is out of timeouts. So they will have to count on dead balls. Rockford Christian's gone over two and a half minutes without scoring. That was until Tischer hit that three ball from the left corner. See, Aaron Armstead has basically spread the floor and taken over this game the last few minutes as far as they want the ball in his hands. And why not? He's got the numbers to back it up. He is their go-to guy. And he has 11 of his 15 points here in the fourth quarter. First team All-Stater and coach Gary London 
said, quote, he had the kind of year we were hoping. And we'll be taking his basketball talents to UW-Green Bay next year. Right at his season scoring average of 17. Hoskins hunted by Johnson. And look how tight Spartans are locking it on now. Nothing will come easy for the Royals. Blocked by Walls. Picked out of midair by Walls. Johnson. Nice job by Tisher. Aaron Armstead will be called for that one, and he knows it. Dominique Walls, such a presence on the inside. Braden Tisher with a drive and then the tie up. Tisher again trying to get deep, being hounded by Armstead. A lot of red shirts in the face of Rockford Christian. Rockford Christian a little bit fatigued right now. Well, you called it early in the fourth quarter. You thought they were starting to get gas, and all of a sudden that's when Hales just turned it on. Twice during the week before the super sectional, Rockford Christian practiced on a college floor, and as Coach Bouch says, that 10 feet makes a big difference. One of two for Tisher. Riley Tischer will foul, sends Hales to the free throw line where the Spartans tonight, just 10 of 17. It's only about 59%. Riley Tischer picks up his fourth personal foul as Art Ford comes back in. Cameron Johnson will shoot it. He's 69%. As a team, Hales only 56%. That is not a state championship type of percentage, but it hasn't been a factor, Dave, because they've been ahead of everybody by 15, 18, 20 points. Down by 12 with 65 seconds to play. And Braden Titcher looks like he may get three free throws out of this. That freezes the clock with exactly 60 seconds to play. Off the dribble, Braden Tischer elevates, and not one but two Hales Franciscan players come in to attempt the block. Tischer, three of four from the line tonight. Three free throws coming up. His numbers there, just four of 12 from the field, however. And you see his legs, everything coming up short right now. That young man's exhausted. If I haven't made a mistake, he has not yet left the basketball court. And not only has he played the full 32 minutes, but he's been hounded relentlessly. For the most part, it's been the defense of Aaron Armstead, number 23, just wearing on Braden Tischer all night long. This was a four-point game. The end of the third quarter, 33-29. Tischer can only make one of three. And he can't even catch Alcantara. And we were just talking about Aaron Armstead. You talk about his offensive numbers. Coach London just praised his defense. He is their best defensive guy. He shut down Dean Danos from Aurora Christian in the in the super sectional game. I think Danos was off a 32-point sectional final and shut him flat out down as they routed Aurora Christian the other night in Joliet, a game that you saw. They flex their muscles, they flex their speed, and this guy right here, Eddie Alcantara, he had a big night, double-double, 16 points, 11 rebounds. Four assists and seven steals. That super sectional win. He has 11 points tonight. Hale Franciscan will take the timeout with 53.2 seconds left, holding on to a 13 point lead in their bid to get back to the state championship game once again. They won it in 2003. They won it on the floor in 2005. Their title was stripped to them because of Illinois State Board of Education recognition that had lapsed. And they are making plans at least 53 seconds away from playing in tomorrow night's championship game. And who will they play? The winner of this one right here. Pittsfield Murfreesboro coming up next. The Pittsfield Sockies.
have been riding a wave. We can't even say it's a roller coaster. It's a wave here into Peoria with a great tournament run. Murfreesboro, they're bringing the whole city up from Southern Illinois. They'll bring a 34 record as well. They feature an All-State guard in Gerard Gaston. You go back to uh, Shane Bouch's keys to the game. We talked about it on the open. He said they had to handle the ball. Rockford Christian, 14 turnovers. So they probably get a C or there, but they needed an A or B. He said they must rebound. They were holding their own, had a 15-13 advantage. We talked about that. But since then, 29 to 23, the advantage is really gone. Later on, two hails Franciscan, and then gauge the tempo. The tempo definitely in the favor of the Spartans. Hales will not make it easy here in the final minute. Ford blocked by Walls into the block by Walls. Rockford wants a foul right here. They need to get somebody. Or not. Finally, they get Aaron Armstead. And that will be two free throws coming up. That's the 10th team foul on the Royals. Well, Aaron Armstead's going to end up the leading scorer in this game, 17, and then what he does from the line here. But Alcantara, how about the line of Eddie? 11 points, 8 rebounds, 7 steals. Uh, excuse me, 7 steals. What a great night, a great floor presence he's had. Get a glance at the Rockford Christian bench, seeing that perfect 31-0 season slipping away here in the final 20 seconds. This loss will come to a team, though, Hales Franciscan, that average margin of victory here in the playoffs, 28 points. We've got a 15-point advantage right now. Riley Kisher. Boy, he's had a big night. 14 points for the... And... This will do it. It will be Hale Franciscan playing for the 2A state title tomorrow night. Gary London happy to get back there. It was one year ago. The Spartans lost to Robinson 64-61. That was their inspiration for this entire season to get back, get through this semifinal game, and give themselves a chance to play for the state title. I thought the Hales Franciscans game plan was outstanding. They changed defenses a couple times, but their weak side rotation was awesome. No doubt about it. Dominic Walls was a fly swatter on the inside. Aaron Armstead was just glue on Brandon Tischer. Very well coached team defensively. It's Hales. Their offense is created by their defense. Some great runouts and just a very solid, it ended up to be like a matter of fact kind of victory for Hales. A very worthy state championship appearance tomorrow night. This game was tied at 22 at the end of the first half. Hales Franciscan stretched it to four after the end of three quarters, but then the fourth quarter, all Spartans, they outscored Rockford Christian 23 to 14. Let's check in now with Matt Rodewald. Uh, with head coach Gary London, you know, after last year losing in the semifinals, is the word redemption fair to say? <laughs> yeah, I think it's a fair use of that word today. I mean, these guys have been focused on this all year long. Uh, we wanted redemption for that first game last year, that first semifinal. So they've uh, they've achieved that, and now we got one more step to take. You averaged uh, your five wins in the postseason by 27 points. This was a difficult game for you, despite what that score says. Talk about what broke it over. Open. Well, I think, you know, we made an adjustment on our defense at halftime. Uh, we weren't playing a lot of, uh, uh, you know, they were getting too many easy layups. And so we adjusted. We went to a little zone uh, trap, and I think that kind of opened it up for us a little bit. All right. Thank you, Coach. We'll talk with Aaron real quick to talk about his 19-point effort, the Wisconsin Green Bay uh, recruit. And he talked about working on that tra trap defensively. Did that really open it up for you guys? It really did. We, um, we had to come out and execute it better. Uh, we really didn't do much trapping in the beginning. We just kind of laid back a little bit. Then we brought, picked up the intensity with the traps in the second half. You know, last year you've been down here and you've had a tough schedule. You guys play a 4A schedule. You're not afraid of anybody. What's that mentality like for you guys when you come down here at this level? Well, we can, it kind of we know it kind of gives us an advantage knowing that the teams that we're playing against haven't played against the competition that we have played against. All right, Aaron, good luck in the championship game. Heading there tomorrow night, and we'll hear more from him. We've got the country financial three-point shootout coming up, and then another semifinal game with another unbeaten team. Will Murfreesboro go down? Pittsfield has something to say about that. We'll find out next. Aaron. 
Back here at Carver Arena, we just finished up our first semifinal. Hales Franciscan, although it took a little bit, took out Rockford Christian and will be moving on to the state championship game in two-way. And they will take on the winner of Murfreesboro and Pittsfield coming up here in a couple of minutes. Matt Rodewald with you here. So glad that you're with us here. The Country Financial three-point shootout is coming up. We have the Class 2A group. Of, we had 1A earlier. And Patrick Schmelzi was the uh, winner of that one in the 1A. And we'll meet our 2A contestants as we get set up for the three-point shootout. They'll have 45 seconds to shoot five balls from three spots around the arc. Each made basket counts as a point. The highest total advances to King of the Hill competition. The participants in the 2A will be a sophomore from Rock Falls, Jay Sanderson, a junior from Byron, Gavin Nelson, a senior from Rockford Christian, Braden Tischer, and a sophomore from West Frankfurt, Trenton Eastley. Good luck. First shooter, Rock Falls sophomore, Jace Anderson. All right, so our first one will be Jace Anderson from Rock Falls. Top seed in the sectional in Genoa Kingston, stunned in the semifinal by the host team. And hold on, hold on here. That first shot, not quite ready yet. We've got to reset the clock first. I think we need to put that clock at 45 seconds in order to make sure that Jace has enough time to shoot. Again, 45 for seconds, 45. five balls per rack, three, ball, three racks here. So you basically got to get through each rack in 15 seconds pacing in order to get all your shots in. And it's all about rhythm shooting. Starting right off the top there, Jace hits the first couple. And he is in good shape, so how about that? He ended up, I believe, missing that. And then he goes, perfect, five for five on the balls that count. Continuing the second rack here, he has yet to miss. He has yet to miss. He is 10 for 10. And he is still perfect. Plenty of time. Oh, and he missed one. He can't hit them all. Wow, what a performance. Jace Anderson from Rock Falls. 14. Let's see if we can talk to Jace points. real quick. Jace, you can't Jace hit every shot, but Anderson. you tried. Oh, yeah. Man, I don't know how that one went go in, man. You missed that first one, that didn't count. And reset it. Did you call did it calm you down a little bit? Yeah, a little bit. The rack was up, so I, so I moved it back a little bit. All right, you having fun with this? Oh yeah, well, definitely. Let's see if that number holds up. <laughs> we'll do what we can. Jace Anderson from Rock Falls. His mom is down here shooting him, videotaping him from the bench. I think she got some good shots there. So kudos to mom being the good luck charm for Jace Anderson. Now next up is Gavin Nelson from Byron, the Tigers. Also got to that sectional semifinal round in Genoa Kingston. And these kids advance per regional, per sectional. So you're talking about two finalists coming from the exact same sectional. These kids have been shooting against each other. Gavin's been shooting against Jace basically the entire tournament. He's got two here struggling. And he's going to do well on that last rack. But it's hard to get to the number that Jace Anderson put up there. We'll talk to Gavin. Now, Gavin, you have shot against Jace in the sectional pretty much all. You've seen everything. Has he put anything up like that before? Uh, no, never that I've seen. He shot outstanding tonight. How does that change your focus? Do you just go, what, what do I got to do now? <laughs> I told the guy over there, 14 is going to be a hard number to beat. <laughs> Well, it, it is, and congratulations for getting this far. Gavin from Byron, and we'll see if anyone can get anywhere near that. 14 for Jace Anderson to start things off. Now our next shooter, just like we had in our first one, the semifinal loser, Braden Tischer, is going to come back out and shoot. And we'll see if he redeems himself. We'll see if a loss like that kind of relaxes him. We know that he was pretty fatigued. He was missing a couple of free throws late in that game against Hales Franciscan. And he moved the rack there. He's up to four. And this is just awfully, awfully difficult. When you see a number like 14 up there and you gotta go perfect, and so now the next rack is just gonna have a nice casual shoot here. And one more to go as he's hit six, and he'll put it at seven. And we'll talk to Braden. Braden, 
Well, you, the game didn't go the way you like, and then somebody puts a 14 up there. You just kind of have to throw your hands up, right? Yeah. Yeah, was, I mean, best uh, hats off to him. He had a great round. Um, so What's I, was, I was a little tired, but 14 stuff to beat. What's so. the season been like for you? It's been great. Uh, uh, dream season for my senior year. Uh, great fan support. You can see our student section came out of a uh, big following. Um, so it's really brought the school together as a community. And glory to God for what we've been able to do this season. It's been awesome. All right, Braden. Well, congratulations for getting this start. We'll see you tomorrow in the third place game. You get him a chance to go rest, maybe take a nap or something. He's just oh, look yes, awfully tired. And our final shooter will be Trenton Easley from Frankfurt. And again, you basically have to be hot from the start. Trenton, the sophomore, not only a, a basketball player, member of the golf and fishing teams as well. He's, he's shooting with the warm-up pants. We have not seen this. And he's got to have a very nice showing with six so far. He could get to double figures. But it's not going to be enough. For Trenton, Frankfurt, and the Redbirds, And 0-4 in the last rack, the last one at the horn, and he got that one. Well, you, you hit your last shot at the buzzer on Carver Arena floor. That's kind of neat. Yeah. What is this like for you? It's different. It's a lot of people here to watch you, a lot more nervous. Yeah. Well, we'll let you go calm down, and congratulations for getting this far. The Class 2A King of the Hill and advancing to the King of the Hill competition next weekend, our award ceremony. The tie for second. Gavin Nelson of Byron, Braden Tischer of Rockford Christian, and Trenton Easley of West Frankfurt. And the winner with 14 May, Jace Anderson of Rock Falls, a sophomore. Congratulations. Shoulders, shoulders, gentlemen, shoulders, shoulders. You see the pictures being taken? And congratulations to the four shooters who get down here for Class 2A. Well, there's only one class of shooter tonight. And I'm not sure if anyone expected that. As he shakes hands with everybody else, we'll talk to Jace Anderson real quick. You know, for, have you shot 14 out of 15 at free throws? Uh, I made 30 out of 30 before. Okay, so you have done that. But still, 14 out of 15, that's incredible. Yeah, I don't know. I just shot it. No. What goes through your mind when you're hitting them over and over again? Do you even think about, well, how many have I hit here? No, I just keep shooting. I'm thinking of nothing when I'm shooting. Well, you got a week to think about it, see if you can do it again for the king of the hill, all right? I hope so. Thank all you. Right, congratulations, Jace Anderson. 14 out of 15. He <laughs> buried the competition. <laughs> class 2A, country financial three-point shootout. We got a class 2A semifinal, Murfreesboro and Pittsfield, coming up next. Welcome back to Carver Arena. The teams have taken the floor. Murfreesboro, the Red Devils, they brought the whole town. We're not kidding. They sold out their allotment in just a couple of minutes to come up here to Peoria. And it's not just a quick drive. It's a five-hour-plus drive. We're going to talk more about that. But Pittsfield, they've had a wild postseason, and we will get into the up and down and up and down emotional roller coaster that is Pittsfield and the Sockies. Murfreesboro and Pittsfield coming up next. In case you're just joining us here on the IHSA Television Network, Matt Rodewald with here at Carver Arena. We'll catch you up on what happened throughout the day. Of course, we've had semifinal action in Class 1A. West Central pulling away from Woodlawn, getting a 48-27 win. And then in the other semifinal, it was Newark taking control of that one and moving on to the championship game for the very first time at 32-1. And, and then our first 2 I semifinal just finished up. Ailes Franciscan needing a rally late to pull away a final of 56-43, a score that's definitely not indicative of the type of game that it was. And of course, we'll be going through that as the evening goes along. And and so Hales will wait the winner of tonight's matchup between Murfreesboro and Pittsfield. Of course, as we get ready for the state semifinals here, 3A and 4A level, we're getting ready for the uh, sectional finals that are going on right now all over the state. They just started up, and one of those teams in the sectional final, East Aurora, playing at home against Glen Bard East, and the star of that team, Ryan Boatwright, considered just a miss for Player of the Year in Chicago. Has something to say about all those points he can put on the board. I have no idea. <laughs> I just went out there to play. I just, I just want to make sure we won. Um, past four years, uh, I think we beat St. Uh, Proviso last year, but we lost the year before that. 
And I knew our home fans didn't want to come out, you know what I'm saying, and, 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 and witness us lose. And plus, I had that bad game on Friday, and I went home and said I could never play like that again, so I got to make it up to my fans. And came out and did that, so, I mean, it was a great feeling. They were so worried about me driving and, and scoring for myself and creating another opportunity. They backed off me too much. And uh, I had a couple of shots uh, that was open. And once I hit two or three, I felt like I couldn't miss. So I kept taking them and knocking them down. So um, I think they played off me too, too much. A high scoring game is nothing new for Ryan Boatwright. Earlier in the season at St. Charles, he scored a then career high 55, but fell short of the school record by one point. Looking back, he's glad he didn't set the record then. I didn't know what the record was. I, I had 55 points. I was excited anyway, but uh, I'm kind of I'm happy that I didn't break it up back up at St. Charles. I got to do it at home in front of my fans. I got to do it in front of all my peers, all the people that can't make it out to St. Charles, and actually got to do it on the home, you know what I'm saying, on the home court where it was done the first time. So, I mean, it felt good to me. After three quarters, Boatwright already had 49 points and knew the record was well in reach. History. Um, I knew I was gonna, it was going to be there for, for, for a long time, and um, I knew that I broke 57 with four minutes left, so I knew I could score some more. But, I mean, it was just a great feeling. I looked at my mom, I looked at my cousin and my dad on the sideline. Everybody had their hands up, stuff like that. And then um, I, knew, I noticed before I took my last free throw that my teammates were standing on the bench telling everybody to get up. I guess they realized it was the, the, the record point, too. So, I mean, it, it, was, it was a great feeling. I felt he would, had an opportunity to do it. And I was pulling for him to do it at that time because I wanted him to get it in a competitive game. You know, I didn't want to be a, a 30 point game and we hit him in the on the court for the uh, fourth quarter just for the record. And he got it in a competitive game Saturday and I'm glad that we got it out of the way early in the year. So with the word out on what Boatwright can do with the ball, is there anything future opponents can do to slow him down? I don't know because they already knew, you know what I'm saying, that I, that I was good from the get-go, and they already do triangle and twos and boxing ones, so I don't understand what else they can do besides add another person on the court. So, I mean, I, they can only do what they've been doing. They just hope I don't have a game like that again. <laughs> And keeping up with East Aurora tonight as we pay attention to the score zone on IHSA.org. Not going well for the Tomcats down at home to Glumbard East, 37-24. to You can follow along at IHSA.org or you can just stay here. we got a 2A semifinal coming up next. Murfreesboro unbeaten. Can they go to 35-0 and take on Hales in the title game? We'll find out next here on the IHSA Television Network.